Hello everyone, very good evening. Welcome to budget session of 2024. So there was a slight delay, sorry for that. Uh, we will start uh, due to the research, some technical issues. There was some slight delay. We will discuss today's budget 2024 session. Here we are not going to discuss only the factual elements. You cannot directly or blindly uh, remember the facts. In the exam you will confuse it. So whenever there required some concepts to be explained, so we will be explaining those things as well. So be attentive when you are listening to the concept especially. Of course, all the facts are very important. But in case when we are dealing with the concepts, you need to be more aware. Before going to the discussion of the budget, we will see what are all the things that we are going to cover for today's session. Okay, so it will be a little bit lengthy session of course, because there's a lot of things to be discussed. The first thing that we are going to discuss is the constitutional mandate of the budget. Why government is providing every year the document or the budget document before the parliament from where this mandate is being derived. So we will see what are all the provisions in the constitution which guide or mandate the government to put forward the budget, budget every year. That is one thing we will see. We will also see the history of the budget. Budget was derived way back in 1860 in India during British rule. From there, how it has evolved the present uh, times. So we will see the history briefly. Then merger of railway budget. So there was a separate railway budget until 2016. So it was merged to the normal budget. Right? We will also see the backdrop why it was merged and when it was actually separated. So we will see the history of the merger of railway budget to the, the general budget. Right? And then the comp. This will be a little bit conceptual. You need to understand it before going to the facts. So there are four components right? within receipts and expenditure. We will see this. Then we will go for the factual things. Okay? Then there are three sets of figures which government is going to provide every year. So those three set of figures are very important and we will also see them in detail. Then strategy of 2024 budget. So this year budget, this will be discussing very briefly. It won't take too much time. But here the strategy what government aimed to achieve to through 2024 budget that we will see and to achieve that objective, what are all the provisions government has brought. Those are also very important, right? So here approach to achieve the goal of budget 2024 and then focusing areas of the government to achieve this objective. Finally, detailed strategy, what government has put forwarded to achieve this Vikshit Bharat. Vikshit Bharat means developed India, okay? We will see this, uh, don't worry. Then budget in numbers, there are certain numbers, factual pointers, which are relevant for our exam. We will see those numbers as well and I will tell you how to remember them and which facts are more important for our exams. Finally, schemes mentioned in the finance minister's speech. There are certain schemes where finance minister has mentioned that we have achieved these things in the last 5 to 10 years. So briefly, we will also see those schemes, right? So these are all the details that we are going to discuss for today's session, right? Hope you are ready for this. If you are having any doubts, you can comment here in the comment section. Yes. Right now it has started. Sorry for slight delay. Right. So if you have any doubts that we are discussing here, you can put a comment here. Right. So I will elaborate them if you are not clear with. First, what is actually budget? So budget is nothing but an estimation how government is receiving the funds from various activities and how government is putting expenditure to welfare or capital assets. Right. For example, you can take as a student you are preparing for from Delhi. Okay, so you will receive certain amount of funds from your parents and also you need to put expenditure on books or rents, right? So you have two way things, you will get money from parents, you need to put expenditure on certain activities which will make you to achieve your goal, right? So you will estimate it, you will be estimating it, how much money is coming, how can I put on rent, how much I can put on rent, how much I can put on, uh, you know, food act, food or how much I can put on books. So you will plan accordingly. Similarly, Government has to plan how much money they are getting from the various sources and which sectors I need to invest more. So that is called as budget. It is nothing but an estimation of the receiving funds and then expenditures towards the activities. So those are called as budget, right? Now, why government is putting forward budget every year? They have elected once for five years. So they could have expendi do expenditure on whatever they want, 
right so they could have done that but they won't do because the constitution there is a restriction on the government so those restrictions are putting i mean forcing the government to put the budget in front of the parliament right so we will see certain provisions under the constitution which are important or relevant to the budget activity first one is article 112 and then article 202 there are two articles 112 is for central government and 202 is for state government so these two articles mandates government to put forward annual financial statement every year before the legislatures so here there is no word mention called budget in the constitution they have mentioned it as annual financial statement so annual financial statement is nothing but budget so it forces central government as well as state government to put forward the annual financial statement that is budget be before the parliament so government is from single party isn't it or maybe two three parties if there is a coalition government but parliament is including the opposition so here the rationale is this government has to put forward so that opposition will also see and then they will question if there is something wrong that is the rationale behind article 112 so that is one provision and the second provision is article 30 113 so here there is certain expenditure from the consolidated fund of india so consolidated fund of india is nothing but whatever the funds that are available for the government will be kept under consolidated fund of india it can be from taxes it can be from public sources so whatever the money that government is getting will be kept under the consolidated fund of india and whenever they are doing expenditure of the amount that is situated in consolidated fund of india they need to take permission right from the parliament right for that they need to pass a bill that is called as consolidated fund of india but there is an exemption which was given by article 113 there are certain uh, offices which are very important for day to uh, i mean the indian political system for example speaker deputy speaker of lok sabha and chief justice of india or supreme court judges these are all the people which are very important for the political system of india for them to give their salaries to administer their offices due to day to day activities for those expenditure government need not take permission from the uh, parliament right that is called as expenditure charged upon consolidated fund of india so this particular fund the amount that they are taking from consolidated fund of india no need to take permission from uh, parliament so that is article 113 which is giving an exemption whenever government want to take so there is an exemption that you can provide money without even asking permission from parliament only for certain resources that is there it was clearly mentioned in the constitution itself who are all can take this money uh, from the government without parliament approval so that is article 113 then there is one more article 114 here the government has given certain amount of funds to the important offices that is chief justice of india and all without even passing the bill this article 114 says after you give money to the important offices under article 113 whatever the other amount that you are going to take the government is going to take those things you need to take a permission in form of a appropriation bill appropriation means allocation so there are 80 ministries more than that uh, i mean there are more ministry across center as well as state so they need to give some money government has to give money to the uh, respective ministries so those monies that you are going to distribute among ministries has to take permission from the parliament because they are not that important you need to be accountable to the people only those offices were exempted in 113 but 114 whatever other expenditure you are going to do that has to be taken permission from the parliament that is called as appropriation bill or sometimes we refer it as a finance bill as well okay so government will take permission from the parliament there is one more article 116 that is called as vote on account let's understand this government will put forward the budget on february 1 the actual budget cycle is from april 1 every year the actual cycle starts from april 1 2000 for example 23 last year to 2024 april 1 or march 31 you can say march 31 so this is the financial annual financial cycle april 1 to march 31 but 
budget is put forwarded a two months early because I will tell you the government will take permission but the government has to be checked by the parliament so there are there are certain committees in the parliament so these all committees where opposition members also will be part those committees will check they have time from February 1 till March 31 so they can check all the finances that government has taken in the last one year and also what government is going to take in the next coming one year so for them there is a two months period so in the two period government need certain amount of money isn't it they need to give salaries to the employees they need to give some welfare schemes within those two months if there is no permission from the parliament then how can they take money they need to give to certain elements or certain offices or certain people right so that is called as an OTAN account it is a temporary provision given by the constitution for government to take money for two months for temporary period right so that is called as OTAN account a temporary permission for two months before the actual finance bill is passed on April 1 the final bill is passed right so that is called as OTAN account these four articles are relevant for our exam and are relevant to the budget right I hope this is clear yeah very good evening uh, you have any doubts from the discussion that has happened you can ask so these are the constitutional provisions now we will move to the budget when it was launched in India uh, how many years back so what are all the important historical aspects we will see here the first time there was a introduction or the element of budget was put forward in 1860 by the East India Company right so this was actually the budget was prepared by British Crown so the government in UK Britain they have prepared our budget we as an Indians did not prepare in India the British Crown was budget uh, 1857 you might be aware about it there was a revolt in 1857 so after that British Crown has taken the East Indian Company from the India right so it the India I mean the whole India is kept under the directly under the British crown right so in 1860 they have prepared the budget in England and then put forward to the Indians so that was the first time that budget has come into the picture then first Indian budget I mean within India after eight years or nine years of the first budget that was prepared in England this was the first time that budget has prepared within India that is prepared by James Wilson this also can be asked in statement based something like that in historical elements so February 18 1869 for the first time the budget was presented in the Indian geographical location right so this is the one important thing then after this there were certain provisions Indian Councils Act 19, uh, 1892 and then Indian Councils Act 1909 during British time itself so they have first given permission to uh, ask some questions then they, they gave a little bit more permission to discuss and engage and finally they also gave permission to vote on the budget from the Indians right so it was uh, on stage basis they have given permission to the complete budget by 1935 act right so those things are all very detailed you no need to worry if you want if you want to go a little bit deeper you can go into the history but I'm briefly discussing the backdrop now after an independent India after we got independence in 1947 right uh, August 15 so the but first budget was put forwarded by Shanmukam Shetty he was the finance, finance minister then the temporarily so November 26th 1947 there was a budget from Indians so he is the Indian so this was the first budget of an independent India right then after Republic of India that means constitution came into the picture when the constitution has uh, come into the picture first budget was put forward by the then finance minister John Mathai so this was the first Republic uh, Republic of India budget then in 1950 we got the constitution into the picture from January 26th then there was an interim election so uh, I mean nine first elections 1951 so 1951-1952 we had an elections proposed so there was an interim budget that means a short term budget what government is uh, you know put, putting forward that is interim budget for temporary period so it was put forward by Mr. Deshmukh the then finance minister as well as the reserve bank of India governor 
so he was both finance minister as well as the governor of reserve bank of india so this was the interim budget because elections are scheduled in the may uh, this was put forward in january 1951 52 for just 2 3 months so this also you need to remember one more important fact for exam is morarji desai so he has acted finance minister for more than 7 to 8 times and in total he has scheduled or uh, you know uh, taken the budget put forward the budget 10 times so this is also important which finance minister or which personality has uh, highest number of uh, you know giving the budgets every year so that is morarji desai he has given budget for 10 times as a finance minister so these are all the historical elements that you need to remember for the exam right i hope this is clear how the budget has evolved what are the types of budgets like mid term yeah so there are uh, two types of budget in general one is the complete budget so whenever there is a no elections for example 2023 24 there are there are no elections central government elections so they have, the government has already elected in uh, 2019 so that was a full budget and this is a mid term budget or in term budget we can tell because there is election scheduled in the coming may so there may be a chance of changing the government or may not be the change so some ministries will change some persons will change so that's why this is a in term budget or a mid term budget okay so that those are the two types that is that we are discussing okay i hope this is clear now we will move to the railway budget briefly in 1921 so you might be all aware that railways became very important during the british period right so after launching the first uh, railway line from 1853 since then in the next 50 to 60 years railways become very important part for the britishers so the budget that they are allocating has become more towards the railways railways were getting more almost 30 40% of total budget from the britishers so that's why william mitchell ockworth mitchell ockworth there was a committee launched under his chairmanship on to read what is the significance of railway budget finally he has put forwarded the ockworth report to the british government that railways are consuming more funds from the budget so we should have a separate budget for railways so earlier before 1924 there was a common budget only there is only general budget but after 1924 there was a separate railway budget as well as general budget so there are two budgets railways and general budget right from 1924 till 2016 there were two budgets one is presented by ministry of finance other one is prepared by minister of railways but in 2016 there was a bibek debroy committee now they have read that it is becoming politics politicizing so whenever there was a budget of railways there are lot of criticism that one state did not get proper uh, railway lines and other state is getting more affiliation so by re after reading all these things and after considering all these things this committee has suggested to merge railway budget along with the general budget okay so the funding to railways are also getting decreased because we are getting more importance towards the defense uh environment education so that's why the significance of railway budget has reduced by considering all these things the committee has suggested that there should be no separate railway budget and we should merge it so finally from 2016 17 uh, 18 financial year there was a only one budget that is general budget and there is some provisions given uh, for railways under the same general budget so this is about the how there was a you general budget a single general budget till 1924 and after that there was a separate railway budget since 2016 and from 2017 18 there was a merger of railway budget with the general budget so this is about the history of railway budget right now this is a very important that you need to remember now this is a conceptual thing we will uh, have a detailed explanation be please be more aware here so only if you understand this then only you will be able to understand the facts you need to remember the facts right so blindly if you are mugging up this many facts you will forget it easily so that's why you need to understand the concepts then we will see the factual things related to these things so please be aware here uh, more alert so we have a general budget so this is the general budget which government will provide 
and this is divided into receipts and expenditure. I will explain separately, don't worry. So receipts means how the money is going towards the government and expenditure means how go from government the money is flowing towards the other activities. I hope this is clear. So this is flow of money towards government receipts. So here we will see the difference between revenue and receipts also but just understand here what is receipts and what is expenditure. So here flow of money towards the government that is Consolidated Fund of India. This expenditure is flow out of government, flow of money out of government, right? So this is receipts, this is expenditure. Now let's understand the next step in the separate slide. So here there is a receipts that means money, this is government. So just take an example from your own life, you need 5000 rupees for uh, each month and your father has provided only 4000 rupees in that particular month because he also needs some other activity so he said that you can adjust for this month. So he has given 4000 only but your expenses is 5000 you cannot remove. So what you will do? You will take 1000 rupees from your friend. So here money flow towards you is 4000 that you no need to pay back. Why you will pay back to your father that is for you to expenditure and one more thousand from your friend you are taking. This is also money towards you but you need to give back. You need to give back. Of course your friend will not accept after one or two months he or she will ask you that please give me thousand I am also in trouble. Right. So this money flow towards the government has two ways. One is the money which government no need to pay back and some more money that government has to pay back, right? So this year they may take from some, some other sources, but next year they have to pay along with the interest, okay? So this is the other flow. I hope you are clear with this. If you are having doubts, just ask here because this is very important to understand. There is a money towards government and one form is the money which no need to pay back and other money which government has to pay back in the next year or maybe after five years. Right? But this is categorized as, uh, uh, so these are all receipts. Government is receiving money, so that is called as receipts. But within this receipts, there is a revenue, revenue receipts. Revenue receipts. So subset, when you are doing the, uh, you know, Venn diagrams, you might be aware about it. So this is a bigger circle of receipts the amount that government is receiving and this is a revenue receipts. This money government no need to pay back. So government no need to pay back all these revenue receipts. It can be from tax, income tax that you are paying, corporate tax that uh, private companies are paying. So this is the amount government no need to pay back. That is called as revenue receipts. Revenue receipts. This amount that government no need to pay back to any one of them. This is for them. They can do expenditure on whatever way they want. And rest of the rest of the money that government is receiving has to pay back. That is called as capital receipts. So that is called as capital receipts. So in this capital receipts, there may be some other elements. I am not going to discuss the whole economy here. That will take a lot of time. But just making you understand the very basics that revenue Receipts is the money that government no need to pay back and in this there is a capital receipts. So this is the money which government either create liability that means government has to pay back. These are the receipts which government creating the liability on government or also there will be certain amount of money where government is losing the assets. For example, there was a Visakhapatnam steel plant issue that is a public sector undertaking and if government is giving away it to someone else. It is receiving money, isn't it? But it is losing the, the asset that government is having. So capital receipts will have, see here, so capital receipts
Yeah. So capital receipts will have capital receipts will have liabilities of the government. That is government has to pay back the money. That those are called as liabilities. And so these are capital receipts I am discussing. And the disinvestments. That means government has sold back the its assets to some other companies. So disinvestments. So this you need to know. Revenue receipt, I think rece revenue receipts is very clear. It is one way payment to the government. And capital again two sub points that is liabilities where government has to pay back and other one is disinvestments where government will sell their assets like PSUs to someone else right so in this way government will receive money towards the receipts here these two I hope you are clear with now after this government also has expenditure government also having expenditure right they need to pay back salaries to the central government employees they want to create some assets defense uh, because China is attacking in the borders so of course there will be a lot of situations where government has to expenditure the money that they are receiving ideally there should be more money that means there should be more receipts ideally receipts should be more than expenditure right so that means you are safe if you are having 6000 and your expenditure is only 5000 then that is actually safe but the case ideally I mean generally here is the expenditure of government is more than receipts. What the money that you are receiving from your father is lesser than the amount of your expenditure. So your debts are increasing. So this is the case of Indian government presently. So here expenditure means again divided into two types. Revenue expenditure. It means a short term like salaries, right? And welfare schemes when they are distributing rice, uh, wheat for 1 rupee, 2 rupee. So those buttons are also taking. So these are the revenue. I mean the one time payments to the uh, other people. So their government is not going to get any money back in this revenue, expend re revenue expenditure. How revenue receipts government is getting for one way which they no need to pay back. Here government pay at once. So they won't get back. Here in the expenditure case, there is also capital expenditure where government will create some assets for example there is a government creation of one road national highway so it will collect the toll from the vehicles so government is continuously getting money from this assets so it is always good that if expenditure what government is doing towards the capital that is creating assets that is very good thing but whenever there is a high amount of expenditure towards the revenue just paying freely for the welfare schemes that is bad for economy right so this is the general budget where receipts and expenditure and again there is a subdivision and I'm not going to do, discuss all the subdivisions that will take lot of time I hope this is clear if you are not clear let me know about any of these events right so I'm giving you 10-15 seconds time if you are having any doubt so please ask or we will discuss if not we'll move ahead who is capital to give money for government? See how government will get ca uh, capital expendi I mean capital receipts. Government may give some loans to the other countries or some other uh, state government, central government will get, give loans to the uh, state governments. So they will get back money after one or two years. Those also will come under the capital, right? So these are capital receipts and government also will borrow money from the other so that also money for the government but they need to pay back in the next coming years. So that is called as capital receipts. Metro project is a capital expenditure. Yes, creation of a metro is a capital expenditure. That is an asset where government will keep collecting the funds from the public. So whoever is traveling through metro, they will pay back the money to the government. So that is a type of capital expenditure. Okay, now moving ahead, uh, the next point here this also you need to understand the budget the budget document that Ministry of Finance Nirmala Sitaramanji at present is putting in front of Parliament has three sets of figures here you need to understand there are three sets of figures let's understand with an example now government is 
you know came forward with 2024-25 budget. So this budget which government has kept forward yesterday was for 2024 April 1. April 1 to 2025 March 31. So this is the current year. We call it as a, oh sorry not current year, the coming year, right? So because Feb 1, it was put forward on February 1. So this 2024-25 is a coming year. Coming year. Okay. So remember this, this is very important. Then going back for, uh, back towards 2023-24. So last year government has provided certain budget document. So here this is a current year. Current year. Why? Any budget year is from April 1 to March 31. I have told you before. April 1 to March 31. And when the budget was uh, forwarded on February 1. That means what? We are in 2023-24 financial year. We are not entered. Only after April 1, 2024, we are going to enter into this year. Right? So that is coming year. And this is a current year from April last year uh, till March 31, 2024. So we are in current year. That's why that is called as current year. Also, there is a 2022-23 year. This is a previous year. This is called as previous year. Previous year. So government gives statistics related to coming year, how they are going to do expenditure, what are all the elements that they are going to put forward that government will give in the budget and also the current ongoing year. How much funds we have planned last year and how much has completed, still two more months are there, how we are going to plan. So all these things also will be put forward in the document. That is the second. Third is final data. So 2022-23, go back. 2022, February 1, government has forwarded the budget. So final figures are ready now for 2022-23 year. So by April 1, 2023, last year, the figures were finalized. So what are the debts? How much we have incurred? How much we have expenditure? All the final figures are ready. This is not yet ready because still there are two more months current years from February, uh, March. We have two more months. So there was some estimation which government will give but final figures are not ready. But the previous year 2022-23 year there is a ready budget or uh, ready-made estimates. Those will be put forward in the budget as well. Right. So here current year and the next year also the coming year also government will put forward. All these three figures government will keep here in the budget in front of the parliament as well as the public. I hope this is clear. Right. So these are the figures that government is putting in the budget document. Actual figures of the previous year. So this is the third one. So actual figures are ready now because last year March 31 is over. Budget and re revised figures of current year. So we have put forward the budget budget last year in uh, you know uh, 2023. So there is still two more months. So there is a revised estimates and this also will be put forward. And the next coming year 2025, what government is planning will also be kept here. So these are the three sets of the data that government will keep in the budget. Right? Is this clear? Yeah. So if you don't have doubts, now we'll move to the current budget. So what we have discussed till now, first we have seen what is budget and then how constitution mandates governments keep in front of the parliament, the budget document, what are all the constitutional provisions. Then we have seen the history of budget. Also we have seen the railway budget, how it was merged uh, in 2016. Then finally, what are all the figures that government will put forward during the budget. That also we have seen. Okay. Now we will go to the, the actual budget of 2024 that government has put forward extra day. Before going to this, uh, I mean, there will be any strategy for any expenditure that government is going to come up with. Here, government has kept the goal as achieving Vikshit Bharat by 2020, uh, 2047. Vikshit Bharat means developed India. So if you go to other countries and ask if whether India is developing or developed, still India is considered as a developing country. Even in any of the documents that government 
keep. So it is generally perceived as a developing country. India is still a developing country. So government want to achieve the developed India. Vikshit Bharat means developed India by 2047. See, just understand here the situation because that will make you understand what are all the things elements put in the budget document. So here the what is the goal of the government to achieve a developed India by 2047. For that government is planning the budget 2024-25. Okay. So here government has uh, you know aimed at achieving developed India. Here there is a vision. This also may be asked in the exam sometimes. Even in prelims or even civil service means they may prepare that prosperous Bharat in har uh, harmonious with nature, modern infrastructure and opportunity for all is the budget vision. How can we achieve it? Something like that in even civil services, something other exams which are conventional. So this is the vision that government has kept forward that all the people in the country has to be prosperous create, through in creating infrastructure. So this is the vision document. I am connecting budget, right? Budget of India. What is the goal? Developed India, right? And then vision. Vision to achieve that goal, okay? And government also came up with the broad plan to achieve this uh, developed India. First one is Sabka Saath Sabka Vikas. So how they are going to achieve the developed India? For this they had a plan now. Sabka Saath Sabka Vikas. That means if for, I mean the development should be along with everyone. So it should be castes, it should be religions, it should be tribes, it should be women, it should be men, it should be children. So with along with everyone we are going to achieve this. Vikshit Bharat, that is developed India. Next, after achieving Sabka Saath Sabka Vikas, we will also take Sabka Vishwas, everyone's confidence that government is going to achieve the developed India by 2047. We will take the confidence from the public through our uh, you know expenditure on certain things. Finally, we will achieve the developed India in the next coming 25 years. Right? So it takes a lot of budgets, don't worry about it. But as of this budget, government has kept the goal of developed India by 2047. So this is the structure or the plan that government has put forward through the budget. Right? So this we have seen. Any doubts in this? Okay. We'll move forward. Then to achieve this, Amrit Kal means, Amrit Kal means the span between 2024 and 47. The, this 20, 25 years, which government is going to try to achieve the developed India. So that is called as Amrit Kal. So what approach government will come forward to achieve this strategy? That is developed India. So what approach government will bring? So they have kept one approach. It will be a people centric and inclusive development. So the development is not just created by the government, but the role of the public people centric. So based on the need of the people, we will plan the budget. So that is the government goal and through which the elements that the government is going to take this people centric development. First one is substantive, substantive development of all forms of infrastructure. So infrastructure is very important. For example, in to transact education to the next level, we need schools, we need to buildings, we need to have digital infrastructure. So substantive development of all forms of infrastructure. This is very important to remember. So the creation of infrastructure, whether physical, that is building, digital means in digital form like internet and all, and social infrastructure, that means literacy, gender equality. So all these things will be taken care in the substantive development through infrastructure creation of social, digital and physical. So social infrastructure means the equality between genders, equality between cash, so it is not a physical asset, rather an ideal one. Then digital infrastructure, that is the internet is an example. So it should have all the digital resources, right? So this is one uh, approach, the first approach that government is going to take. Next is digital public infrastructure promoted formalization in financial inclusion. So here digital public infrastructure means take what is public infrastructure that can be used by anyone. So roads, the national highways, it can be used by anyone. That is called as uh, public infrastructure. Here the word digital is added. So here digital means the digital infrastructure like Covin portal or the internet sources, the digital India. So all these things will be available equally to everyone, the digital aspects. 
because the world is forwarding towards the digital one. So that's why this all digital public infrastructure should be equally available to everyone. So this is the first uh, you know, element in the approach and this is the second one that government has put forwarded. Finally, okay, one more, few more uh, elements are there. Deepening and widening the tax base of GST. So you might have seen that India has got 1.72 lakh crores in the January month, which is highest. So GST government has bought way back in 2017. So they want to increase the revenue towards the government. Why? Those revenue can be kept in creating the infrastructure. Government need money, isn't it? So here the approach is to collect more taxes through GST. That is the approach. Now, strengthening, strengthen the financial sector, brought savings and investment back on track. So you may seen that after COVID, there was a decreased uh, investments from the FDIs, that is foreign entities. And also there is less savings because people don't have money now, right? So government want to promote more savings among the public. So when they are saving, that means they will be kept in banks and the money kept in banks again can be given as a loans to the private entities, corporate entities to create the infrastructure and other economy elements. So government want to enhance the savings and also encourage investments into India. So that is again the other element of the government approach. Finally, gift IFSC, a robust gateway. So it is located in Gujarat. Right. So gift IFSC is nothing but all the insurance companies or the banking companies or whatever the corporate entities, they can be kept and, uh, you know, start the business here. So that means what? If they are starting business, it can create more employment, it can create more money to be run. So finally, it will be creating all the benefits to the public. So government want to focus more on gift IFSC center where all the investments, it's like a sales only special economic zone where all the companies foreign entities can come and invest here right so that government want to encourage then proactive inflation management inflation means rise in prices right so you if you have followed the contemporary things there was a rise of prices after the covid years so inflation there is already target of plus or minus 2 by the reserve bank of india right so inflation should not cross more than 6% or not less than 2%. So that's how the government RBI has already planned. So government want to also manage this inflation proactively, right? So that is one more approach. All parts of the country becoming active part of economic growth. So all the parts of the country, Northeast, South India, West India, Northern part of India, all the people has to be developed equally. So this is the approach what government is going to or put forward to achieve Vikshit Bharat, that is developed India, right? Creation of infrastructure, then digital infrastructure or digital public infrastructure. Also, increasing the tax base for the government. So tax base means collecting tax from more sources. So they want to increase more tax collection so that they can do expenditure. Also strengthening the financial sector by increasing the savings among the public, also encouraging the investment into India. And then they want to also encourage the business to invest more in gift city in Gujarat so that it will also create the employment and all. Then inflation targeting. Finally, all parts of the country will be covered. So this is the approach what government is going to uh, take forward to achieve the developed India goal. Right? Yeah. Next. So we will move forward to the next, uh, I mean approach, this is the approach. We will go certain areas where government is going to focus. So government has put forward it to focused areas. So there are two focusing areas which government is going to put more efforts on. Okay. So focus area one, they have given this. The Within the focus area of one, there are certain elements. We need to do this as well. So connect it to the back to the two, side, two slides back. What is the goal? Achieving the developed India. Okay. For that government has given the approach, this approach that government is going to start. Now, there were also some focus area where government is going to focus. There are number of economic sectors. There are number of, uh, you know, elements to be focused. But among that government has identified certain areas where they are going to focus more on the coming years. Right. So here, First one is Garib Kalyan, Deshka Kalyan. That means development of poor is development of 
of country so they have given this so the now what is the element here they are going to focus on poor people here in this focus areas government is also praising itself of course the budget document is provided by government so they will of course praise themselves isn't it right so government is also saying what they have achieved and what they are going to achieve in these focused areas right so here first one is poor people government is saying that direct benefit transfer has led to savings of 2 lakhs crores understand what is direct benefit transfer so earlier if you could able to recall your childhood there is no bank accounts there is no digital so only if the funds want to collect or the welfare schemes the people the public has to reach to the government offices and then they uh, have to stand online right and then there is also a lot of corruption because for every thousand rupees to be given uh, they need to give certain amount to the people who are working there even our former uh, prime minister rajiv gandhi has said that when center is sending one rupee the final reach to the public is only 25 pais that means 75 pais 75 percent of money is wasting so through forwarding the dbt direct benefit transfers where government has created uh, digital infrastructure jandan accounts they have they were able to save 2.7 lakh crore by launching the direct benefit transfer scheme right you need to remember this they may ask in the exam right so how much government were able to solve by putting forward the direct benefit transfer now there is no intermediaries there is no government offices government fund will directly reach to the end person who is eligible to get the welfare scheme right so that government is praising itself next is 25 crore people have moved out of multi-dimensional poverty so multi-dimensional poverty means the poverty derived not only from economical but social and other elements as well so 25 crore people were removed from the multi-dimensional poverty in the last one decade that's what government is telling then credit assistance to 78 lakh street vendors under pm swanidhi so pm swanidhi is a small amount of loan given to the street vendors like who are selling tomatoes vegetables in the streets so government is giving small loans so that they will create a certain amount of livelihood so credit assistance of for 78 lakh street vendors were given by the government under PM Swanidhi scheme. So these are all uh, government praising itself, of course, right? So uh, even if you are clearing your government exam, you will be part of the government only. So no need to take any negative from this. Rather, this is a good thing, isn't it? If there are positives, then this is good thing for the country, right? And also decline in head count ratio. That is again the poverty only. Head count ratio means the amount of people who are in poor. So it is kept reducing. We have discussed in one of the articles in the daily current affairs, uh, this one, the Niti Aayog report on headcount. So headcount is nothing but people who are in multidimensional poverty. So government was saying that in 2005, there are 55.3% of people are under multidimensional poverty. Now it was reduced to only 11%. That means out of 140 crores in India, there is only 14 crores people who are in multidimensional poverty, right? So this is again one more important thing. Finally, empowering youth in this uh, first focused area. Poor was focused. Second was under the first one. So there is a fo two focus areas. This is a one area. Next slide is other area. So within this first focus area, there is a poor and then focusing now on youth. Focusing now on youth. So there are 1.4 crore youth trained under the Skill India mission. Government is saying that 1.4 crore people has been trained under Skill India mission, then fostering entrepreneurship, that means creating business of 43 crore loans and sanctioned under PM Mundra scheme, right? So PM Mudra scheme is nothing but giving loans to the small industries. Government is saying that 43 crore loans has been sanctioned under this scheme for the youth, right? Now, increase in PM Shri budget allocation, so creation of school. PM Shri is nothing but creation of school assets. So government has allocated now 6050 crores for this particular scheme government is saying that we are focusing more on youth development finally there were 23 iits uh, in 2023 when we compare to 2014 where there are only 16 so these numbers are also important there are 23 uh, iits and then 22 aims from seven aims in 2014 government was able to create 22 aims right all india medical institutes then universities from 700 to 1100 we have increased.
right so this is the first focus area any doubt in this next focus area is the welfare of farmers so there are again two sub this is the second focused areas so this is one i mean this is one and this is two so within second focused area there are again two provisions how here we have discussed about poor as well as youth here we are going to discuss about the farmers and the nari shakti so for farmers direct financial assistance to 11.8 crore farmers under pm pm kisan scheme so government has given funds to the farmers and then crop insurance to 4 crore farmers under pm fasal bima yojana pm fasal bima yojana is a crop insurance scheme so government has given uh, 4 crore crop insurance to the 4 crore farmers which is very good thing then procurement has increased right here it has decreased so in rice this how the questions can be framed so there was a increase procured in rice but there is a decrease in wheat so government is procuring from the farmers who are not able to sell it in the markets government is taking directly then nari shakti that is women empowerment for women what government has done 30 crore mundra yojana loans has given specifically to women here we are we have seen mundra uh, mudra uh, i mean loans to the youth now here it is for women there was 30 crore mudra yojana loans were given to the women then increased female female enrollment in the higher schools so higher education sorry higher not higher schools but higher education like universities pgs and all so the role of women is increasing under the government they are saying right 43% of female enrollments was happened in science and technology and engineering mathematics so this is the female enrollment in science and technology and also in the normal enrollments there is a 28% so you can see here the female labor participation as well that is women employment is also increasing they are saying right so these are the focused areas that government has done since last 10 years so they were praising themselves next there are five strategies to achieve this what they are going to do now any doubts in this so now they are also going to come up with the strategies which they are going to achieve the developed india by 2047 there is a amrit kal amrit kal means i have already told from now till 2047 there is a time period which government can focus so here they have divided all the amrit kal strategies into five five strategies that is also very important first one is commitment to meet net zero net zero means whatever the carbon dioxide that we are releasing into the environment the same carbon dioxide has to be captured back right then there will be a balance in the economy so government is achieving the first strategy is to first strategy is sustainable development sustainable development means without affecting the future generations we need to develop ourselves right so under this they are going to first reduce the carbon dioxide through net zero so there are certain approaches government has kept under it then rooftop solarization right so rooftop solarization means reducing the energy de developed from fossil fuels coal based uh, you know energy development is always negative for the environment so government want to focus on rooftop solarization so the data you can see here they also need to going to adopt e buses electric buses where the emissions will reduce from the normal diesel buses or petrol buses right e vehicles and e buses new scheme of bio manufacturing and bio foundry will be launched you no need to worry now once the scheme is released we'll go a little bit detail but government has said that we are going to launch bio manufacturing bio manufacturing means using living element like bacteria to create fertilizers and all so government want to launch those projects in the coming months so there is no details about the scheme no need to worry just government is going to launch it now percentage increase in non fossil fuels so here the electricity is generated from renewable energy as well as non renewable energy so here non fossil means renewable energy government is going to increase much higher as of now it is around 44% so this contribution is still going to increase so 100% renewable energy is always good so government is at the 44 percentage as of now right so this is the first strategy and the second strategy will be creating infrastructure and investment what is the first one 
sustainable development for strategy under that these provisions are there then infrastructure and investment so creating infrastructure and investment is also very important under this they have kept certain elements so under pm gati shakti yojana there will be new three major railway corridors right so there will be three new railway corridors under pm gati shakti yojana then promotion of foreign investments so these are very generic you no need to worry so whenever there is a figures then i will stress you can remember expansion of existing airports and the udan scheme right so udan scheme is a fly, uh, promoting air aeroplanes or the airports in india so they want to expand it then promotion of urban transformation via metro rail and namo bharat so namo bharat is a type of electric rail rails which are uh, you know being handled in delhi as of now so they are going to transform through the creation of this infrastructure so this data is important so capital expenditure we have seen when we were discussing about the components of budget capital expenditure means what the amount of money spending on creation of assets so this is keep on increasing year on year which is a very good thing you need to remember this so capital expenditure is increasing next doubling of fdi flows so in 2005 to 14 right so it was 298 usd billions now it was almost doubled in the last one decade so this also very important to remember there was a doubling of fdi flows into india and also creation of infrastructure so here there is a number of, of fields where government has created physical infrastructure that also you can remember right then third strategy will be inclusive development so inclusive de development means all communities need to be joining in the development right so this inclusive development is also being taken care so aspirational district programs they have identified certain districts which are backward and they are going to focus more on those districts right 117 districts were identified right so that is uh, the inclusive development because those districts are backward present in left wing extremism areas are in the northeast area so those districts government is going to taken care so here they have kept about a women percentage registered in antenatal care so some data was there this this is not that relevant you can just remember that then health so in the health case they are going to launch cervical cancer vaccination in 19 to 14 years girl child right so we have already discussed this in the one of the current affairs session then saksham anganwadi and poshan abhiyan they are going to launch uvin portal for promoting the vaccination so these measures they are going to take under the inclusive development then inclusive development second provision is also given in the budget they will be going to focus on housing for everyone under pradhan mantri awas yojana then tourism also they are going to develop in selective places so these are the two sub sectors that government has put under the inclusive development second then they have they have also allocated more funds to the housing sector so that government is telling it so these facts also you can remember the finally agriculture and food processing the fifth strategy will be to promote agriculture and food processing here they are going to uh, you know focus more on nano di ammonia phosphate then government will also promote public private investments in the private i mean the agriculture and food sectors also we are more depend on imports on oil seeds so government want to make it as a self reliant that we need to depend on our own self we need to reduce the imports also they are going to develop fishery sector so this data again is important increased allocation for blue revolution that means more funding towards the uh, fishing sector also they are promoting formalization of food processing food processing means after harvesting how the food is being processed that is lot of informalization not under the government rules so government want to make it more formalization right so this is about the uh, the strategy that government has kept to achieve the the developed india right now the last case that we are going to discuss are the important facts that for our exam from the budget point of view so we have already seen what is capital expenditure what is revenue expenditure we have seen all these things right and also we have discussed about the amritkal what are all the government approach there are two focus areas 
and after that they have kept five strategies five total strategies from sustainable development inclusive development we have seen those things right how government is going to launch now we will see some important facts which are exclusively important for prelims exam objective questions exam whatever is there this is very important so observe here declining current account deficit so current account deficit means so current account means right where within one year how money is going out of india how money is coming into india so it is always good that foreign money is coming into india right that is actually a good scenario so current account deficit means the amount that we are receiving from the foreign is lesser than the amount that a money going out of india so at present scenario the amount of money from india is going more into the other countries because we were not able to encourage the export so government want to reduce it already it has reduced so in this in this years it has reduced but during covid after covid times there was uh, you know because of lack lacking so again there was a jump in current account deficit so at present government is targeting to 1% approximately as percentage of gdp so total gdp we have the amount of gdp and current account deficit should be almost zero or it should be actually a uh, negligible right but here there is still a significant amount government want to achieve this then declining unemployment rate so government is saying that in the till 2022-23 unemployment kept decreasing at present it was 3.2 percent so this is also important the trend is also important that unemployment is kept decreasing from 2017 till 2022 so that also you need to remember then declining non-performing assets so non-performing assets means the loan given by the banks are not coming back like vijay malia people such such people have escaped by taking money from banks so it was actually increased till 2018 but now we can see there is a decreased trends so rbi kept strict regulation so there was a reduce in non performing assets since 2018 financial year it kept reducing right which is a good thing then rising volume of digital transactions so you might be aware five six years before we were just transacting physically the whole money now the digital transactions are increasing which is a good sign that there will be less uh, you know corruption less amount of uh, exemption from the taxes right so here there is a increased trends in the digitalization of economy rise in average monthly gross gst so 2017-18 the gst was launched so it kept increasing every year again government is getting more taxes from gst that is also a good thing finally fall in headline inflation so core inflation means excluding the volatile goods like food petroleum and all here headline inflation means combining all the items that our economy is taking care so here headline inflation is still in fluctuations so this is not a good sign the government is saying that we will improve it so the target is 4 plus or minus 2 there is a fluctuation sign in 2014 it was very high now it is around 5.5 percent so these are the statistics which are very important for our exam any doubts in this yeah now next one the taxation government also put forward the taxation the rather than proposals so government has proposed certain things we are uh, we need to more focus on the achievements because proposals the proposals are not yet coming to the picture we have to see after how it is achieved here the most important thing is how, what government has achieved in taxation reform this is very very important you will see a lot of questions whether you are writing an objective exam or conventional exam so direct tax collections were was more than tripled tripled in last 10 years so there are two type of taxes right direct and indirect so what you are paying as a income direct it the burden falls on you so those are called as direct taxes and indirect taxes are those taxes which are paid indirectly for example you buy some good right so you are paying indirectly to the government only the excise duty or whatever they may be so here it is always good to be more to more of direct taxes because the burden will be directly put on the individuals so it is always better to have more direct direct taxes to the government so here government is saying that 
it was trebled three times increased in the last 10 years which is a very good sign number of return fillers swelled to 2.4 times that means you are not you know escaping from the tax you are paying the tax and you are filing it that i need to get some money back because i have loans housing loans etc whichever government is given exemptions so the number of return filers people the tax net has increased 2.4 times that is also very good thing faster refunds so whoever the whoever need to get back some money so for example if i am paying income tax i will get certain amount of money back because of exemption given by the government so those reduction in average processing of return has reduced from 93 days to 10 days so the corporate the people whoever is paying taxes are immediately getting the refunds after their final deadline what government has kept which is again a very good sign and then average monthly gross gst collections are stood at 1.66 lakhs right so that is also good thing then increase in tax buoyancy of state from 0.7 to 1.22 in last 10 years so what is tax buoyancy with the increase in gdp how much tax the government is able to increase if gdp is increasing and the tax collection is decreasing that is a bad sign so the money is escaping in a wrong way so here government has was able to increase it to 1.22 times in the post GST period right so they were able to collect more uh, tax with the increase in the GST right so that is again the good sign positive sentiments from GST were accepted through service 94 per industry people have accepted GST is a good thing and there is also decline in import release since 2019 so there was uh, some exemptions and all these are not that relevant so decline in the import so release time means whenever the cargo is entering into the Indian uh, po, I mean the coast so they were able to immediately process that and immediately go back so that it is good thing the wastage will be reduced and the burden also will reduce so this is not that important just the release time was reduced in the last few years right the tax proposals are not that important so government has proposed they have not changed any tax rates whatever the tax rates that are existing last year they have remained it we need to check we need to see in the next coming one year how the taxes will perform so these are the proposals which we will see in the next coming one year okay right so the last section we are coming forward with budget in terms of numbers this is important so we will see one by one there are some five to six uh, data that we need to uh, take care of right so here there is a receipts and expenditure so in the starting itself i have explained what is receipts and what is expenditure receipts means what the money go, uh, money is getting i mean government is getting money expenditure means how the government is spending so this is very very important to understand for our exam point of view so the total amount of or money that government is receiving is called as receipts out of that from which portion government is re receiving more funds so here the highest is from income tax income tax is paid by salaried individuals so the most amount of money is coming back i am excluding here borrowing and other liabilities so of course government is taking more uh, debts from other resources so the borrowing is 24 28 percent sorry so the total amount of money that government is receiving out of that 28 percent is the borrowings which is creating liability they need to pay back so this is in very high number so government is trying to reduce it so apart from borrowings which are this is a negative thing for government i told you receipts has both negative as well as positive positive things are called as revenue receipts and uh, other receipts are called as capital receipts within which debt rece debt uh, receipts are also there so here 28 percent government is taking uh, in terms of uh, debts or borrowings here income tax is the highest revenue for the government followed by gst so gst collections and other taxes forms the second this is first and third is corporate tax that is from private companies right so these three are important to remember and what is amount of borrowings the government is taking 28 percent of receipts are nothing but borrowings right and where rupee is going where government is doing more expenditure that is you can see here the domination one is right interest payments that means 
whatever the borrowings are taken last few years, last one year, two year, three year, four year, five year. So whatever the amount government has taken as a loan, there is an interest on it. So you need to pay back. If you are taking loan from bank, so you will be paying some certain amount of interest, right? Similarly, government is wasting 20% of the total money that they are receiving in terms of just paying back the loans, which is very bad thing, right? So government need to reduce this uh, as much as possible. This interest payments has to be reduced, right? More so that this 20% can be put on more capital assets. So this is the amount that government is paying much than state shares of tax. So central government is getting certain amount of tax in form of in, uh, income tax, corporate tax, GST. And how much they are giving back to the states, uh, 28 states, right? 20% of total money that government is receiving is paying back to the states. 20% going for interest payments, 20% 20, 20 is going to the uh, state governments, right? Then there are other provisions, centrally sponsored schemes and then pensions, other expenditure, defense, subsidies. So all these are waste expenditure. They want to create more assets, isn't it? One, if you are not creating more assets, that is going to harm your government or the people itself, right? So they want to create more. This is a wasteful thing. Pensions are also wasteful things because they are not creating any expend, uh, any assets. Subsidies, again, there is a wasteful thing, right? So defense, yes, this is a positive thing. And other expenditure is nothing but a capital expenditure. That is fine. But we need to increase more of the uh, things that are creating capital assets, right? So this is about the uh, rupee how it is going and how it is coming. Next, the amount of funds given to various ministries that you need to remember in terms of lakh crores. So 6.2 lakh crores. The highest allocation for the ministry is defense, defense ministry that you need to remember. Followed by road transport, then railways, consumer affairs, you can see this. First two, three, you can remember that will be sufficient, right? So that is about the uh, amount of money given to the various ministries. Then allocation to Major schemes, for certain schemes, government has kept, uh, highlighted that we have given certain amount. So this may be asked in the second level of exams like group 2 or the class 3, class 4 exams. They may ask, right, so how much of funds allocated to this particular ministry? In civil service and higher level of exams, these blind facts are usually not asked. So this Manrega scheme, it was allocated at 86,000 crores, then for Aishman Bharat Health Scheme, they have allocated 7,500 crores. Then Production Linked Subsidy Scheme, they have allocated 6,200. Then Modified Program for Development of Semiconductors, Chip Development, they have allocated 6,903 crores. Then Solar Power, they have allocated 8,500 crores. Then National Hydrogen Mission, they have allocated 600 crores. Right? So, that is about the uh, certain facts. Now, Few more facts we have, which is important. Receipts, total amount of receipts that uh, we have seen uh, in the, uh, I mean, budget part. Budget part, we have seen what? The receipts as well as expenditure. Expenditure. So, this, there are two categories and within receipts, we have revenue receipts and capital receipts and expenditure, we have revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. So, these figures are also very important for our exam. So, you can see here in revenue receipts. So, these are we have discussed in the first session, I am not repeating again. So, here revenue receipts means which money government no need to pay back. So, here it kept increasing, which is a good thing. If revenue receipts are increasing, that means government is getting more funds from various sources. So it is increasing since 2022, so which is a good sign. Then capital receipts. Capital receipts means the amount of money which are creating liabilities on government. Government is borrowing from some sources. They need to pay back, right? Or they are disinvesting. That means whatever the PSUs are there, they are selling back and getting money. So they are also losing assets. So capital receipts is good when they are decreasing. So you can see here, it, it has increased in 2023-24, this year. But government is trying to reduce in the next coming one year. So capital receipts means those liabilities that create on the government. So this is also trying to decrease revenue expenditure. So wasteful money. They are just giving pensions. You have seen this, how, how they are spending on rupee. So this pensions, interest payments, 
uh, and subsidies. These are all wasteful things which are not creating assets. So here revenue expenditure is keep on increasing. We need to try it to reduce. We need to make it to down curve, right? Then effective capital expenditure means this capital expenditure, whatever the expenditure that government is doing on creating assets, there are certain expenditure which are wasting. So whether they are giving into in terms of, uh, uh, you know, state governments for welfare from welfare schemes. So the effective capital expenditure means whatever the capital expenditure the government is doing within those capital expenditure, which are exclusively creating the good wealth like roads, buildings, right? Some uh, irrigation, uh, which are very good in nature for the welfare of the people. So it is also increasing, right? So among the capital expenditure, effective capital expenditure also good thing. So government is trying to increase it. So we have seen this, right? We have seen this. We have come to the last part of the budget here. So budget, we have discussed all these things. What is revenue receipts and all. So I'm just displaying you to see, to, to make you observe the overall figures. You don't need to worry. So we have already discussed here. I'm going to tell you certain elements which need to be remember for the exam point of view, right? So among the receipts, so what are the types of budget? There are two things, receipts as well as expenditure. So among the receipts, we have revenue receipts and then we have the non-tax revenues. You need to remember this figure, this budget, this figure you need to remember here. The total amount of revenue that government is getting in terms of crores. So this is the amount that government got. So what is the amount? 34 lakhs, 37 thousand in crores, right? 34 lakhs, 37,211 crores. This is the amount that government got in terms of revenue tax, right? So these are the revenue receipts. So within revenue receipts, government got tax revenue of this much amount that you can remember for the exam. And then non-tax revenue. Beyond tax revenue, we have external grants. That means other countries are giving money to India and then dividends. So interest receipts. So government is also giving loans to some other countries. They are paying back our interest. So this you need to remember non-tax revenue, right? So this figure also you need to remember. What is the total uh, tax revenue and then non-tax revenue? So here you can observe the trends also in tax receipts the um, as percentage of GDP. How much government is receiving from tax? So this is a fluctuation thing. It is always better to have more or less. Tell me. So this is actually you should have more. Government need to get more taxes as percentage of GDP. So government is trying to increase it, which is a good sign from this year 2019-20. Government is getting more taxes. Then net receipts of the center. This is the total tax, but overall how much center is getting after giving back to the states. So blue indicates net tax revenue. So government is able to Central government is able to get. You no need to remember the final figure. Just observe the trend, whether it is increasing or decreasing, right? So this is about the tax trends. This are expenditure of the government. So here you need to remember central expenditure, right? So central expenditure, the central government expenditure is this. How much money government is getting? How much government is doing expenditure? This figure is also you need to remember effective capital expenditure. This figure also you need to remember. You can just remember for 2023-24 that will be sufficient for the exams, right? So in the next year what we get that is not important until the next year budget is shown. Finally, trends in capital expenditure. So we have seen the capital expenditure is keep growing. So blue one is capital expenditure and orange or yellow one is grant in aid for creation of capital assets. That means we got money from some other sources like World Bank and all. So here blue one is kept increasing. Capital expenditure is increasing, which is a good thing. So these trends you need to understand. The total transfers to the states. So government need to, central government need to give back to the states, right? So this is also increasing, which is good thing. The federal, uh, it is protecting the federal uh, structure. So they are giving more funds to the state. That's what the government is saying. So composition of transfers also you can see. Here, uh, devolution is much higher. So devolution means 
the extra money that government is giving every year to the states. So that is also you need to remember among the available things which are higher. So that is also you need to remember it. Right. So finally deficits also we need to know. This is the last uh, element that we are going to discuss in the budget. So revenue deficit means how much amount government is getting one side which, in, which no need to pay back. So this is difference bit, between revenue expenditure mi minus total revenue receipts. So government is having more revenue expenditure or gaining more money. Actually go government is expenditure more. They are doing more expenditure. That's why it came here. But in western countries there may be reverse. Revenue will be more for the government. So that is called as revenue deficit. I am briefly discussing it. Physical deficit means amount of money that government need to borrow every year because there are no sufficient funds. So the amount of money that government need to borrow back is called as physical deficit. Then primary deficit means among the primary or physical deficit, right? Among the physical deficit, how much money you are paying in terms of interests, which are useless thing, right? You are taking money in terms of borrowings and you are just paying interest to those loans, which are not creating any assets. So that is called as primary deficit. And finally, effective revenue deficit means among the revenue deficit where you are putting some good thing, right? So that is called as effective revenue deficit. Here you can remember these facts. So I have discussed about the definitions part. Now you have to remember what is the physical deficit of the government? What is the revenue deficit of the government? What is the effective revenue deficit? What is the primary deficit of the government? So these figures you need to remember for the exam point of view, right? So understand it before doing these figures, understand these concepts, then you can remember the factual things, right? So these are sources for physical deficit government has given that. So physical deficit means what? The amount of extra money that government is borrowing because there is no sufficient amount of money. So here also they may give in the exam which parts the which holds the largest part of physical I mean physical deficit. So here market borrowings are more higher short term borrowings followed by security. So this also you can remember which forms the highest part, right? So deficit trends, you can see physical deficit, uh, this physical deficit, the highest one, the amount of money that government is uh, taking back as percentage of GDP. So if you are having 100 crores out of it, 4.5% it is a, I mean the deficit for the government. So 4.5 means how much? So out of 1000 crores, uh, 45 crore government has to go give back, right? I mean 1000 crores, if it is 45 crore government has to pay back. If it is 100, then 4.5 crore government has to give back. So this is the present physical deficit. Uh, I mean from 2013, now we were able to read, uh, increase actually. See here. So from 4.5 percentage of physical deficit, government is increasing. So it is trying to keep it under 3, 3.5, right? So these are the red one is revenue deficit, green one is effective revenue deficit and primary deficits. So these also you can remember the trends are important to be remembered, right? Then sources of deficit financing, we have seen the most of the deficit are coming from market borrowings, the green color one. So the amount of money that government is taking from is mostly from market borrowings. They are taking from the market. Right. So the private or maybe from a government security public. So from there they are taking the money. So this is also important to remember. So this is the final figure that you can remember. I hope this is clear. There are few more schemes that is not that required. We have briefly discussed. We will have a separate session once the government is announcing certain schemes. Right. So these are all data we have discussed. I am briefly just giving you the overview that we have discussed. Government has kept one goal to achieve developed India by 2047. For that they have kept one approach under after that they have clearly mentioned the detailed strategy in five steps that they are going to achieve, right? So that was the budget and we have seen the different figures that are relevant for our exam. So I have discussed about the receipts, revenue expenditure, all those things you have to shortlist yourself and you need to remember, right? So this is about the budget and the figures. In detail, we have discussed. If you have any doubts, you can ask or else we will end the session. Right? Yeah. 
So all the figures that we have discussed, uh, there is pecuity of or lacunity of time. It keep uh, like you know increasing if you are keep on discussing those things. Rather, you can just shortlist these things which I have focused. So that will be sufficient from the budget figures. Okay. So this is about the budget 2024. Thanks a lot. Keep following.